one little man in a small town who makes the startling discovery that he holds the greatest power on Earth. That's the story of Awakening, taken tonight from the files of John Steele, adventurer. <laughs> Hello, friends. This is John Steele. And how are you this evening? I know you're interested in another story of adventure. And tonight, I have one I know will make you do a lot of thinking. And serious thinking, too. No, no. <laughs> it isn't about me. There are so few of us who can tell of many adventures. At best, in a lifetime, we experience one exciting moment that makes for a real story. Yet, each one of us has had one such happening that stands out above all the rest. These bits of living are the stories that we bring to you. Tonight's tale concerns a man I met while I was working in a small town in New England. The man is a very usual kind of fellow with a very unusual story. Here he is to tell it. Fred Tompkins. Fred? If you've ever lived in a small town, you'll know how it is in Reedville. Seasons come slow up there. The calendar moves from spring to winter and back to December again before you realize it. Year in, year out. Changes don't happen there. They just kind of move in on us. That's why when my father died, I took over his store. That's why for 15 years, Jenny and I were content. Just to live slow, just to keep the store. But I guess it began that spring morning. Fresh eggs, folks, seven crates. Here, let me give you a hand. It's okay, just tell me where to put them. Right, right on the floor, right here. Uh, 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 heavy. Have a cigarette, Steve, relax. Uh -uh. <laughs> Gotta get my wind back first. Soda? Oh, what do you got around here? Got your favorite sarsaparilla. Sounds good. One soda coming up. Want me to fix you something to go with that, Steve? Sandwich, cake? Good Lord, Jenny. I just finished breakfast. You sure? Jenny likes to see everybody happy, and she believes in keeping them like that by stuffing food into them. Now, Fred. It's a good thing I don't come here more often than once a day. The way you treat me, I'd get so fat I wouldn't fit my clothes. How, Susan? Fine, fine. Head of a graduating class. I'll swear I never know how an ugly old runk like you grates a wife like Cora and a daughter as pretty and smart as Susan. I'm lucky. So are they, Steve. Cora was asking when you were coming to see her, Jan. Ask Fred. He keeps me chained to this store while he's off running the village of Reedville. Now, Jan. You told me you're going to be elected president of the new fire department. Well, now, who's been spreading a rumor like that? Oh, news gets around. <laughs> my old man used to say, never count your money till you had it right in the palm your hand. Go on. Be modest. Don't you pay attention to him, Steve. He knows he's going to be elected, and he's tickled pink. Jan, what do you feed him to make him so popular? <laughs> All right, you too. No kidding. School board trustee, notary public, head of the Grange, and now president of the fire department. You're making it sound bigger than it is. I wouldn't say that. You're a pretty important guy, Fred. Have a candy bar. No, I can't. How much do you for the pop? Forget it. Come on now, how much? It's all in the house. Look, Yesterday, someone forgot to charge up that carton of cigarettes. Day before, someone just accidentally forgot to mark down for cake. Uh, yes? Customer, excuse me. You fight it out with Jen. She's boss around here. Morning, Miss Adams. Nice day today. Good morning, Fred. Smells like spring finally decided to stay a while. Some high test, Fred? Fill her up. I think Jen ought to do it. Don't often see you around so early, Miss Adams. I have a special errand today, Fred. Sure enough, Doc's due home. That's it. Big convention, Philly, wasn't it? Now, how did you know about that? Don't worry, Miss Adams, you'll make it. That 1035's always late. Oh, you know he's on the 1035, too? Listen, Miss Adams, you keep a store in a town like Reedville as long as I have. You be postmaster in Notary Public. You'll go in and out of people's houses with orders like me. you find out a lot of things about people and what they do. I suppose so. Oil? Oil, Miss Adams? No, no, thanks. I'll just clean out this windshield for you. No charge. <laughs> Never saw anyone work as hard as that husband of yours, though. Too bad he has to go off to so many conventions. City's an awful place in the spring. Yes, he works very hard. Yes, sirree. Doc's a nice guy. It's a shame, I say, if a man can't find time to enjoy his own guests, even. Guests? I see that Connecticut car around a lot. Must be a pretty good friend of yours. Yes, he... Uh, it's a friend. 
Good-looking chap, too. Yes. Doc's going to feel pretty bad missing him. What's life worth if you can't enjoy a few friends? I guess I... Thought so. Thought so last night when I saw the car in your drive. Poor Doc, I last thought... Last night? Uh, I delivered your grocery order. You must be mistaken. Please? You must be mistaken. There was no car in my drive last night. I... I wasn't even home. Ma'am? I said I wasn't home last night. I went to a movie. Well, it's not important, Miss Adams. I often go to movies when my husband's away. I... I don't like to be alone. Don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, sure funny, though. Can't you hurry, Fred? I'll be late. I came into the kitchen like I always do. I could have sworn I saw you in there moving around the other room. You couldn't have. Music was playing. You were at the piano, I guess, and I could hear voices. But you couldn't have. Well, maybe it was someone else. There were no guests, I tell you. <laughs> you know, Jen has been after me to get glasses. I'm beginning to think maybe I ought to now. I could have sworn I saw a blue Cadillac with yellow leather seats. Please, there was no such car in my drive. You must be mistaken. <laughs> you say there wasn't? No. Then there wasn't. We all make mistakes, Fred. Yes, sir, we do. I'm sure you were mistaken, weren't you? Could be, could be. Uh, that's all, Miss Adams? That's all. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Fred. Ma'am? I'll pay you later. No worry, Miss Adams, no worry at all. <laughs> Gone? He went out through the kitchen, said to tell you he'd see you at the inaugural dinner for the new fire department president. She sure did. Uh, honey, I wish you wouldn't talk when your back's turned. I said that's a funny way to act. What's funny about it? Steve often goes out through the back. I wasn't talking about Steve. Oh? Laura. What about her? She acted like something was worrying her. A doctor's wife has a lot to put up with, I guess. Jen. Yes? What's today? I mean, what day? Tuesday, of course. I had to go to the bank. And... and yesterday was Monday. Naturally. And on Monday, the movie's closed, isn't it? You know that, Fred. Monday's Jim Porter's night off. Then why did she say that? Who, for goodness sake? What? My strange. Strange. <laughs> I couldn't sleep that night. I don't know why. I lay awake and stared out on the dark. The peepers made a sound like small thunder. I couldn't sleep. I thought about all the things that come to a man in the dark. Jenny, the store, things I've never finished doing. Then I thought of the fire department, and it was a good thought. The next day, Laura Adams came into the store to pay her bill. I owe for the gas, too. Will you look it up, please? Certainly, certainly, Miss Adams. Hey, got a new French dressing in today. No, thanks. Fresh escarole? I already have some, thank you. Don't often care. I thought maybe you might like some more, Miss Adams, in case the company dropping in or anything. The doctor and I entertain very seldom. Best to be prepared, Jen always says. In the country, you have to keep a well-stocked cupboard. Did you find what I owe you? And sixty-three forty-nine, exact. I think this will cover everything. Doc get home okay? Fine. I'll have to see Doc one of these days myself. I didn't know you were sick. <laughs> Me? No. Just want to chew the fat a while. Doc's an interesting guy to talk to. Yes, he is. Miss Adams, you lost something. I, uh... Oh, thanks. Well, it was mighty careless of you, Miss Adams. Yes, wasn't it? That kind of money doesn't grow on trees, my old man used to say. It uh, must have fallen out of my purse. You women, you should be more careful. These days, a penny comes hard. Man can't even get his tooth filled for $100. Oh, I suppose you're right. It takes money, a lot of money, to keep body and soul together these days. Yes, sir. I, um, yes, uh, sir. Yes. Prices shooting sky high. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Tompkins. Say hello to Doc. Professor Elwell wants to borrow your rent. Something happened to his car again. Sure. John Steele called, said to tell you the fire department election's probably on Monday. You'll get a notice. Hope I can make it. As if you wouldn't. You know right well there's no other man in town who can do the job as well as you. Yeah, well, that's right. Nobody as smart, as energetic, mm -hmm. as responsible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew it. I just knew it. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard a word I said, Fred Tompkins. Not a word. I'm sorry, Jen. I was thinking. <laughs> you don't have to do it when I'm talking to you. Oh, my goodness. Jen, how long the Adams has lived in town? Eight or ten years? About. Why? Just thinking. They keep pretty much themselves. Some people like to be alone. 
Some people might have reason to. What'd you say? Strike you, is anything odd about his wife? She's prettier than most women around, that's all. Beautiful women always stand out. Left alone a lot, too. I feel sorry for the poor little thing sometimes. With her money, you feel sorry for her? Money isn't everything. Sure it is, Jen. It's power. We had Lars' money if we had any money. We wouldn't have to work seven days a week, sweating to make ends meet. If I could... could... You know, Jen, most people are scared, aren't they? Are they? There's always something a man tries to bury away. Always one thing he's afraid of. What are you afraid of, Fred? Nothing, that's just it. A man who isn't afraid can do anything. Just about anything in the world that he wants. Adams. Did I order any groceries today? No, ma'am, you didn't. I came on business of my own. Come in. Nice house you have here, Miss Adams. Thank you. Yes, one of the nicest in town. We like it very much. Uh, yes. Mr. Tompkins, you had some kind of business? Yeah, I... Uh, I did. Can I get you some tea? No, no thanks. Nice piano you have here. We've had it a long time. I hear you play it every now and then when I deliver groceries. You play real well. <laughs> You're very kind. Lonely people play a lot, I noticed. My old man used to play piano, too. Did he? I would have liked your... Yeah. Mr. Tompkins. Well, it's about a piano, Mrs. Adams. Yes? Well, you know that old rosewood piano Jenny and I got in the attic? The one you admired so much? Oh, it's truly beautiful. I'm glad to hear you say that, Mrs. Adams, because... Because I'm going to give you that piano. No. Yes, I am. There is another person in this whole town I'd rather give that old piano to except yourself. Knowing how you love music, Miss Adams, and how alone you are all the time, it's just what you need. You're very generous, Fred. But I have a piano. It's a wonderful instrument, Miss Adams. Two pianos. <laughs> I can only play one at a time, you know. Believe me, you can't afford not to buy this one, Mrs. Adams. Buy? I... I guess I didn't put it very clear. I see. I guess... Well, it looks like we're wasting time. No. Ma'am? My husband. What would he say? Well, now, I'm sure Doc would want you to be happy, Mrs. Adams. Music is such a harmless pastime, isn't it? When you consider what some lonely women do when their husbands work. If I didn't have a piano, it would be... You don't have an old rosewood. How much? $4,000. You're joking. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I took up enough of your time, Mrs. Adams. No, no, wait. I... I'll have to think it over. Sure. Sure, you do that, Mrs. Adams. Think it over. Look at it, Jen. Four thousand dollars. I see. Four thousand fat dollars, and it's ours. Why should Laura Adams buy our old piano? Maybe she wanted it. All of a sudden? Why not? been up in our attic for years. Why didn't you buy it before? Maybe one of those city visitors of hers told her it was valuable. Nonsense. Laura's no fool. It is a good piano. No hunk of wood is worth that much. That's a fine thing. The minute I try to do something to get ahead a little, you have to pick it apart. Customer. All right. Coming. Morning, Fred. Jenny around? She's out back. Dropped in to see if any of the flowers came in yet. Cora's been kind of looking forward to spring flowers. I think Jen saved a box for her. Jen? Yes? Got Cora's flowers? I'll get them. Hello, Steve. Jen? How is Cora? Fine, fine. Shame a woman who loves flowers as much as Cora should only see them from a wheelchair. Oh, I don't know, Fred. The way I figure it, my wife and I have a lot. The farm, my work, Susan. Do you know Susan was voted the prettiest girl in the whole high school? No. 
Oh, doggone, she should be. Uh, mark me down some pop, will you? Stop yourself. Think the world of Susan, don't you? Whole world. You have every reason to. Not every guy has a daughter as bright and pretty as Susan. That kid certainly makes herself a raft of friends. Well, Cora and I are giving her a little vacation when school's out. Kind of a graduation gift. Well, now, for long? Well, just about as long as she likes, I guess. A lot of people will miss her. <laughs> Including her old man. Susan has a lot of friends. Hey, uh, what kind of fancy stuff is this? Peppermint. They're making it all colors now. Oh, mark me down a box. Cora might like some. Or Susan. Well, Cora and I do spoil a youngster a bit. No, you don't. Of course, Cora's being an invalid so long, it kind of makes it hard on you, I guess, Steve. No matter how close you are to Susan, there are some things a kid like that has to tell another woman. What things? Oh, it's not important. Well, it's important if you mention it, Fred. New kind of bread came in this week. Vienna loaf. What things? Cora might like some. What things, Fred? Kids are all a little wild these days, I guess. What are you aiming at? What do you mean? Nothing. Skip it, Steve. Like I said, all of us will miss Susan. I know a particular party who will miss her especially bad. For instance? That rice boy. What about the rice boy? Nice kid, I guess. I didn't mean that. Huh? What about him and Susan? Now, look, Steve. What about him and Susan, Fred? Your father, Steve. You know better than anyone. I don't think I'll wait for the flowers. Cora will be disappointed. Tell Jen I'll pick them up later. Steve, listen. Hey, hey, Steve. All afraid. Anybody call about the election meeting? Not yet. Steve's secretary. I know he is. Oh, for goodness sake, I was only going to suggest you call him. He'll call me. He wouldn't dare not to. Fred, I'm worried. Now what? We're $300 behind this week. The store's losing money. Is that all? Forget it, Jen. We have money, a lot of money. Not if we don't earn it. That was my mistake, too. All along, I worked too hard. I should have used my head. Laura Adams canceled her account. What? I don't like it. Oh, well, we can get along without the Adamses. He's not the only one. The Harrises and the Brewsters and the Landauers. Laura Adams was her best customer. I don't like it, Steve. I don't like it at all. Hi, Professor. Hi, goodness. We is certainly a messy season. Yeah. Those roads back to New School are literally a sea of mud. It's only literally an hour to drive back. One of these days, that old buggy of yours is going to get bogged down good, Professor. Uh, it's a sturdy car. Had 20 years. I'm all afraid. Big pardon? Nothing. Uh, you should try conscientiously not to mutter, Frederick. <laughs> Forgive me. I keep remembering you as a small boy who sat in my English class, <laughs> blushing and stammering. <laughs> Hey, you know, Frederick, my first accomplishment as an instructor was helping you to overcome that handicap. Thanks, Professor. Ah, uh, those were the days, Frederick. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. You've prospered. What's that? I see you did well for yourself. District school supervisor's quite an important person around here. Well, fate's been good to me, Frederick. Yes, indeed. Hear anything about the fire department elections? That word. How's your sister these days, Professor? Cynthia. Cynthia? Uh, splendid, splendid. Glad to hear it. Yes, indeed, she's fine, fine. How nice of you to remember, too. Been almost uh, 12 years since Cynthia left Reedville. My, my, tempest does future. World's an awful small place, Professor. Yes, indeed, I always say it. Not that... long ago, I ran into a friend who knows Cynthia. Uh, how... Oh, yes? Yeah. Chaps an attendant at one of those sanitariums. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really must go. The roads, you know. These days, people who get too fond of the bottle are treated just like sick people, it seems. I, I must get on. A lot of people are asking about Cynthia. My car, you know. The lights are bad. I, I... You ought to have another car, Professor. 
One of these days, that old crate won't get you home. New models are so expensive. Not a new one. Something like my car, for instance. I'd like to see you have a car like that, Professor. Oh, yes, indeed. It, 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 it's a handsome car, Frederick. A very handsome car. I'd sell it to you. Oh, my, no. Reasonable. I, I couldn't. I... Think about it, Professor. <laughs> Right. Jen, what is it? I just broke a bowl, that's all. Are you hurt? It's my grandmother's cut glass compote. I never liked it. What are you doing back here anyhow? You ought to be out in the store. Somebody has to clean the house. Doggone, Jen. You shouldn't be doing this heavy work. Where's all that help I hire for you? Susan didn't come. Oh, she didn't. Well, we'll just find out right now. Oh, I had a heart attack. Doc's there now. All right. All right, then. I'll get you someone else. You can't get help in this town. I'd like to know why not. Help's hard to get, and you know it. Soon as Nora came over as a sort of favor. I paid her good money. Now Sue won't get a vacation. She'll have to nurse her mother. Okay, okay. What's the matter with you? Can't you forget Cora Preston for just one minute? Just one? I've done housework before. I guess I can do it again. It's a pretty cheap trick Steve's pulling. Pretty doggone cheap. For heaven's sakes, Cora didn't have a heart attack just so I'd have to clean the house. I'll fix him. I'll fix him. The soda man came. I ordered sarsaparilla. That's good. Why don't you go out? For a walk or something. I don't feel like it. I'll take care of the customers. What customers? Two people came in yesterday. Sam Jones and Ruggles Crib. Dead beats. Fred. Yeah? I went to the bank yesterday. You always go on Mondays. This is Tuesday, the 18th. We have a lot of money in the account, Fred. I told you we did. The store's losing money. For Lord's sake, Dan, don't don't try to tie this store around my neck forever. I have other projects I work on. Daniel and the car didn't bring that much. I tell you, I have other projects. Quit trying to run my life, will you? I'll go out if I want. And if I don't, I won't have any woman tell... Hello, Fred. Tompkins. Nice to see you, John. Hey, where's everybody? What do you mean, everybody? Well, we're here. Usually, you have to fight your way through this place. Kind of quiet lately. Spring planting, I guess. Just past Professor Elwell down the road. You know, <laughs> I just can't get used to the idea of the professor's new car. It used to be kind of a landmark, you might say. The old boy put putting along in his Something for you, John. Sure. Need some cigarettes, as a matter of fact. This your brand? Yeah. Well, looks like the Reedville Fire Department's going into action at last. It's about time. Official. Elected a president last night. What? Joe O'Brien. They were supposed to notify us. They didn't even let me know. I got a car. Nobody told me. It's a frame-up, a cheat. Hey, wait now. They can't do this to me. I waited for this all... please. You're lying to me, John Steele. They sent you here with their dirty lies. Let go, Fred. They can't do this to me. They can't. Let go. I'll show you out. Sorry, Fred. Yeah. Goodbye. They can't do this to me, Jen. That office was mine. It was all set. Forget it. They're yellow, every single one of them. Fred, nothing's that important. It is to me, and they know it. They're yellow, and they're playing all their dirty tricks to pay me back. Pay back what? Nothing. Of what? Leave me alone. I only asked a simple question, Fred. Quit trying to poke into my business. Why don't you lock the store and go to bed? It's after hours. You could use some rest. The store stays open. You kept telling me you don't care one way or the other about the store, and now... It stays open. All right. If they think they can threaten me, I'll show them they can't. Oh, stop this crazy talk. You're lost. Forget it. It's Steve. He engineered the whole thing and the doc. Fred. If he wants his money back, he can think again. What money? Leave me alone. What money, Fred? Leave me alone! Oh, shout at me, Fred Tompkins. Then quit running my life. I won't have you talking to me like this. No? No, I won't. I'll talk how I please, Not Jen. Not to me. You're just like the others. That's enough. Shut up, will you? Jen? Okay, then. Where are you going? Get out of the way. Put down that gun. I'm in no mood to argue, Jen. Put down the gun. I'll show the lousy little... Fred! Put it. Fred, listen. Jenny, I warn you. Put it... Jen! <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Thompson. No answer. Try 
again. Keep trying. Hello? This is Tompkins, Mrs. Adams. Fred Tompkins. Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Adams. Yes, sir. Number. Ring again. Hurry. Yes, sir. Listen, Mrs. Adams, where's Doc? The doctor's out on a call. Where can I reach him? Can't you? I'm afraid I don't know, Mrs. Thompson. You don't understand. This is urgent. It's a matter of what... Listen. Oh. Number, please. Get me Preston's. This is Preston's sister. They asked me not to ring after nine o'clock. These my friends. Well... Hurry. Hello? Steve, this is Fred. Steve. Oh. Steve, I need help. I need help right away. Sorry. It's not for me. It's... Goodbye. Steve, listen, it's Jenny. Sorry, Professor Elwell doesn't answer. Try again, he answered before. A little deaf, Mr. Thompson. Ring, keep on ringing. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, it's my wife. I can't leave her. Yes. Try everywhere. Yes. Wait. John Steele. Yes. Ring him. Hurry. Joe. John, Fred Tompkins. Who'd you say? Fred, Fred Tompkins. Listen, John. Find time to wake a man. It's Jenny. She's hurt. What? Jenny, shot. I'll be right there. Jenny, now take it easy. How is Fred? she? We've done all we can. She's got to get well, Doc. You've got to make her. You've Be got to. Pace. Don't you understand? If Jenny dies, there's nothing. Nothing. She's all I got. All take I... Take it easy. I'll do anything. I'll give you anything. I never meant to harm you, Doc. Honey. I know everyone in town hates me. That's not true. But I never meant your harm, no matter what your wife says. I... If my wife and John Steele hadn't driven all over this country looking for me, there wouldn't be any question even about waiting now. Laura? Yes. Okay, help. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Let's go, Tompkins. What? Just a minute, sure. I gotta get him booked. All right, all right. Fred, don't worry. They all know you didn't shoot Jim. No. Oh, no. We'll get Mac on the case. He's a good lawyer. I'll do all I can for Jim. Don't be afraid. Oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> 